Just a couple of days ago, we suddenly found out that Deck 9 is working on a new Life is Strange game and not just any Life is Strange game. Unlike True Colors, we will see a protagonist we already know from Life is Strange, Max. Now that's something I sort of suspected while we were finding out that Deck 9 is working on a new story driven game that obviously now Life is Strange is in their hands. There is some small leaks here and there, nothing really too believable. But it was a, yeah, I would say a concern of mine because I wasn't really sure if Deck Knight can handle Max with as much care that she deserves, with as much nuance that was presented in the first Life is Strange game that we all love and know. We are very protective of it, which could definitely be seen in the response of the fandom. I would say it was mixed. Many people were concerned, myself included, in fact I was quite negative to start with, but then I watched the gameplay, I watched the uh, Hannah Tell interview, so Mark's voice actress. Now I'm a bit more positive, I think they are misleading us, so I wanted to address some of the concerns that showed up in the comments here and there, and obviously the biggest one of them would be, where is Chloe? That was a big concern of mine as well, I was worried that if she's not there, then it sort of diminishes the meaning of the first game. That they are disregarding our decisions, which meant a lot to us because obviously we are major fans of the game. I myself started my entire channel because of Life is Strange and recorded, I would say, hundreds of videos about Life is Strange. So not having Chloe there, whether she survived or not survived, in that case it would be, you know, acknowledging that she existed. It felt like that disregarding us. It felt like they aren't acknowledging the fact that we love the first game so much and the first game meant not only Max but also Chloe. They even stated in the interview, which was to me initially a major red flag, that this is a standalone title. Now I understand that for some players Chloe is not there. Some players chose to sacrifice her, some of us chose to keep her alive, to save her, and myself included. That's why I wanted to see her in one form or another, and I know that if they wanted to respect both of these decisions for both of the players' groups, it would take a lot of effort to make it work properly. Comic books that Life is Strange released prove that it's possible. I actually like these comic books a lot, I recommend them highly if you want to check out, yeah, I guess right now it would be alternative version of the ending, that they follow the Bay ending, the uh, Safe Chloe ending. They really treat the whole timelines thing uh, in a very smart, nuanced way, so I do recommend them and it's possible. Obviously, Deck Knight couldn't just rip off the story from the comic books and they decided to sort of create something of their own, which was a standalone story with Max, but without Chloe. I was so worried to start with, but I'm starting to be just a bit more positive about it. I'm starting to think that Deck Knight as a developer was delivering games in a pretty even meta. Both games that they have presented were actually very good. I liked Before the Storm, which was a prequel to Life is Strange. I know that some people didn't really like it as much, but I don't recall too much of criticism back when it was out. I think people liked Rachel and the story that it presented. Deck Knight's weak side would be antagonists. They often go with a pretty uh, straightforward antagonist, some sort of a conspiracy, something evil for the sake of being evil without proper explanation. They don't really go as far as Don't Not did with Mark Jefferson, who was a fantastic evil antagonist, sort of a psychopath type of a deal. But it doesn't matter because they also deliver much in other aspects. They have fantastic side characters, they created Steph, they created Ducky and True Colors. Ryan was great in True Colors. Well, I could list more and more. So so they do deliver in these aspects and Three Colors was a great game as well. So we have two games that they uh, provided under the Life is Strange title and both of them were actually great. The only one I did not like as much was Wavelands DLC. It felt like it, it was dragging a bit but I, I can ignore that, that's, that's not a problem. They also delivered Farewell which to me was 10 out of 10. It was the uh, level of Life is Strange, works perfectly with the game. I love replaying Farewell, then Before the Storm and then Life is Strange, playing it in a chronological order does change things if you if you want to try it. I also recorded a video about how this is a superior order in my in my opinion. But anyway, that's what we got so far from Deck 9. So maybe being as worried was premature. Maybe maybe I shouldn't have been as worried because because they have been actually great. Now, if you think about Don't Not, I don't want to compare because these are two different creators, but they were working on the same titles, more or less, the franchise. There's no need to 
say that Life is Strange was a brilliant 10 out of 10, 10 game that changed many of our lives. But then there was Life is Strange 2, which to me wasn't as great, like it had some logical flaws. I played some other Don't Not games recently and while they're great, I feel like they're still sort of trying to find their way. However, I'm very excited about Lost Records game that will be coming this upcoming fall, their new title, which so sort of feels like a spiritual successor to the first Life is Strange game, despite not using the title, that they're not allowed to anymore, as Square Enix sort of owns the title, but the game that they are creating, it's sort of a coming of age story with a yeah, supernatural element. It for sure, it's going to be similar to Life is Strange, so I'll be also covering that game too. So what we're left with is a standalone title with Max as a new protagonist. Max has changed, her voice has changed. Hannah told, said in an interview that she's been working on that and it's actually fantastic because you can tell that she made the voice far more mature, far more adult and it's wise of her to do so. Max in the gameplay does feel like Max. It feels like the same person only years later obviously now she's an adult she's almost 30 years old so she's an adult she looks like herself initially i felt like deck 9 did what they often do they sort of glamorized her deck 9 tends to make their characters uh, sort of i would say maybe a bit overly attractive like Rachel for Rachel it did make a lot of sense because she was supposed to be con conventionally attractive she was supposed to be this magnetic type of a girl that half of the school is into but then Steph and Street Colors they also I feel like glamorized her a bit and now with Max initially I thought that maybe maybe they did the same thing but then again, maybe it's just their style and something that we can sort of go with. I don't mind because it does feel like Max's essence is still there and that's something that I might enjoy. Hearing Hannah tell is, is enough to sort of make Max feel like Max in one way. Now, when it comes to the gameplay that we saw already, the events that we were presented with, one might question how is it possible that Max again encounters a friend that's shot and then it triggers her powers. Again, my main concern here was that it would sort of disregard the main plot of Life is Strange, the essence of the first game, which was to me Chloe and Max's bond and the fact that powers that woke up within Max were triggered because she cared for Chloe. And now Safi, like we are all assuming that she's definitely not as close to Max as Chloe was, so why would she trigger Max's powers? Perhaps these are the same powers that Rhea woke in a um, different shape. That's the only explanation that I can come up with at the moment. Hopefully it's not because she cared for Safi as much, because I feel like it wouldn't really be fair towards the essence of the first game, but still, maybe they'll come up with something to explain it properly. Powers are a difficult element to handle. Do not make it sound like X-Men in a way. To explain it with some emotional reasons. Because to me, these powers in Life is Strange, they were never about the supernatural element. They were always about some sort of a bond. Safi seems like a nice person. I grew to like her within these 18 minutes of a gameplay. I hope she's not a love interest. I hope that whatever version of game we get, we're not going to get some sort of a romance if we picked Chloe and Life is Strange. Now, when it comes to the choices, directors said that in early on in the uh, story, we'll get a conversation and in that conversation, we'll sort of reveal our past. So we'll get to choose, we'll get to tell them if we chose sacrifice Chloe or save Chloe type of an ending. I'm hoping that they will also sort of let us tell that we, for example, romanced Chloe because some of the people romance Warren. <laughs> it would be great to be given that chance because I really want that choice to be respected. I really want them to acknowledge the fact that we loved Chloe and that we ended up with Chloe. To me personally, it's a must when it comes to double exposure. Personally, I still need my max to be with Chloe. Personally speaking, that's where I'm at mentally, where I left the game. Sacrificing a whole town for her is a big deal, so I really want them to acknowledge that. Even though this was a uh, teenage love sort of a thing, it always felt like much more because they knew each other their whole life. So to me, sacrificing the whole town and leaving together, it meant that they would be together together, that they would be a couple. And I understand that there's a lot of trauma involved, that there are difficulties, maybe they grew apart, but eventually in my head, in my canon, they worked past that. Saving Chloe is a responsibility in a way. We don't save her to sort of grow apart. I feel like it wouldn't really be fair of Max to sort of place any guilt on Chloe, which would, I imagine, 
make them sort of struggle. But then again, I understand that some difficulties might have been there for sure. And I'm hoping that they work past that. I'm hoping that in double exposure, if we pick the uh, Chloe ending, if we tell them that we romance Chloe, then it will be acknowledged in the game and Chloe is somewhere for another reason other than us growing apart entirely. I think the gameplay that we are shown so far is the uh, sacrifice Chloe type of ending. That's why Chloe is not really present there. That's why she isn't in our messages. If you check the phone, if you see the phone in the game, she's not there. I think if you pick the uh, safe Chloe ending, then Chloe will be in your phone. Hopefully, those of us who saved Chloe would be getting, for example, messages from her. And by the end of the game or at some other point, but hopefully by the end of the game, we would get some sort of a cameo that we are leaving together. <laughs> I'm starting to think that this might be something that Deck Nine is working towards to, but they're just avoiding the topic to make it a surprise. Because if you have a look at the interviews with both Hannah Tell and the developers, they did not mention Chloe once. I think the uh, interviewers, they were directly told not to ask the question because they didn't want to hint at anything. Even saying that they cannot say is already a hint big enough. That's why I think that what we saw so far in the gameplay is the uh, sacrifice Chloe ending and in the uh, safe Chloe ending, Chloe's presence will be much more prominent. That's what I'm hoping for. I think the game might have an indie vibe despite the initial ambience that I got from the trailer. In the gameplay there was a uh, Nova Amor band song, so band that they used in True Colors. And also it's not like they are ignoring Chloe altogether because in one of the uh, materials that they post you can actually see the polaroid that max holds and then safi also asks her a question who chloe was to her there's a possible reply when you say that you were high school sweetheart which initially was also a big concern of mine because high school sweetheart does not even start to cover what chloe meant to max but maybe we don't want to overshare considering the nature of the of the events that happened in the first game and whatever happened in between so to sum up, I'm starting to think that my concerns were too big, maybe excessive. Someone commented under my previous video and stated that so far Deck9 has been delivering, so I want to give them the benefit of a doubt at this point. Also for the sake of my peace of mind, because I want to believe that if we see Max, then it will respect whatever I chose and whatever you chose in the first game. So I'm starting to be cautiously hopeful and I'm hoping that, that the game will be both great, which is something that I'm almost certain of and that life is strange essence will be still captured and kept within reason i understand that handling two drastically different endings was a challenge and going for a standalone game does make somewhat sense to keep it sort of fresh and to keep it true to what we chose and i'm starting to think that in that scenario it is possible to handle both these endings with care without having to make two entirely different games because then we're in one of these Chloe is present and, and the other one she's not. They did say that they respect both endings and there's no canon and I think the fandom will keep them to their word. Anyway thank you so much for watching let me know your thoughts down below I'm always happy to discuss and I'll see you soon I'll be covering the content for both this double exposure and for lost records by Don't Not. Stay safe guys this is all from Stop Me Oceano. Bye!